Um, I want to thank you all for coming. Uh, I want to thank Alexandra Sanchez and the Queens Public Library System for having me here. Um, I want to say actually that I've spoken about this book uh, in many countries, in several countries around the world. I've spoken throughout the United States on the book. Um, but here in New York, I've only up until now spoken in Manhattan. Um, so I want to say it's great to actually be in Queens, which is the most diverse borough and probably the most diverse place um, in the country and, and the world. So it's great to finally be able to do a reading here in Queens for the book. I'm Michael Luongo. I'm the editor of the book, Gay Travels in the Muslim World. And one of the things that I'm very proud of with this book, while I, I love libraries, um, I also love when people actually buy books. So it's a top gay travel book on Amazon. It's consistently in the top 10. Interestingly, it's also a top Islamic studies and Islamic history book on Amazon. So that's another thing um, I hadn't actually expected when I did the book. Um, and that's a, uh, another thing that's come out that's very interesting about the popularity among different groups for the book. The book is in English right now. Next year it actually comes out in Arabic, which I'm very happy about. Um, it's actually very rare for books to be translated from English to Arabic of any topic. Um, it's quite rare. So for a book of this topic to be translated, it was the rights were bought by a Lebanese company uh, for distribution in the Middle East. Um, I think it will be very interesting when I actually get to do those, those talks because they're interesting enough in the English-speaking world. Um, so that's another thing that I wanted to mention that I'm quite happy about. Uh, you know, you put a book out and you wonder where is it going to go. So that's one of the things that's going to happen with it. Whenever I do talks, whether I'm doing talks at universities, or whether I'm doing talks at bookstores, whether I'm doing talks at libraries, one of the things that always comes up is, you know, well, what's gay got to do with it? It sounds a little bit like that, that Tina Turner song, you know, what's love got to do with it? But people look at the title of the book, Gay Travels in the Muslim World. They look at the issues that are out today concerning the Middle East, concerning Muslim issues. And they'll ask, well, you know, wh why would you look at this from a gay perspective? You know, why would you do such a thing? What I want to say is that there's many reasons for doing a book of this topic and, and looking at gay issues in a Middle Eastern and Muslim context. Uh, we're living in very special times. I mean, we're all in New York. We, we know how different everything has been since 9-11 um, and how these topics have really come to the forefront. I don't need to remind people here of that. But one thing that I want to point out, especially because people say, why would you look at this topic since 9-11? is that if you really look at the coverage of 9-11 and the coverage of these issues, homosexuality, often very sensationalized, has always been part of the conversation. So I didn't start it. Uh, one of the things that I point out to people, if you remember, and we're going back eight years on this, uh, Mohammed Atta, who was one of the men who flew the planes into the Twin Towers. Just after September 11th, you began to see all of these stories in the press, both in the mainstream press and in the gay press about the possibility that he was gay and the fact that he might have been gay influenced him into wanting to be a terrorist. Uh, you saw articles where he had problems with his masculinity, people uh, actually examining photographs of him, trying to point out how effeminate he might have been. And there was a quote in, in one of the publications uh, that even his father had described him as girly or girlish. So this topic of homosexuality, this topic of issues of masculinity and femininity, and whether that drove terrorism was, was right at the very beginning of everything, right with 9-11. So that's a start, uh, for one thing, when people ask that question, what's gay got to do with it? The other thing is if we remember back to when we invaded Afghanistan uh, in October, November of 2001, uh, shortly after 9-11, what I began to notice were these articles about homosexuality concerning the Taliban, concerning Afghanistan, um, some very interesting articles that sort of suggested that the Taliban were a group of gay men who hated women that somehow had taken over the country, and that again, that the, the possibility that they might have been gay influenced their behavior. So again, it wasn't me starting the conversation, it was something that I had begun to read. Um, there was an article in Details Magazine, the men's fashion magazine, in 2003 that, that looked at the Taliban and homosexuality in terms of gender separation um, and how that might have influenced their behavior. Essentially, the article was saying there were a group of gay men that took over the country. We'll have time for questions at the end. I'm sorry. Um, 
And so, you know, that was, was there. There was an article in Scotsman, which is a British publication about uh, gay Afghan farmers who were begging uh, British soldiers to have sex with them. Uh, you know, again, I get into more of this when I read a little bit from the introduction of the book, but these topics were already there. They, they were already part of the discussion. <clears throat> the other thing, and quite an, an horrific thing that was part of the conversation, was the homoerotic sexual torture in Abu Ghraib. Uh, by the time we had some of those photos that had come out, uh, 2004, I believe, is when it, when it had first broken. Now, it's very clear that the Middle East does not like the fact that we invaded Iraq. And whether you hated it at all to begin with, once you had those photographs out, it clearly colored in another way and made worse the situation um, in terms of what people thought of the United States invading Iraq. Now this obviously, recently under Obama, this topic has come up again because there are more photographs that have not been issued. Uh, one of the things that I think is very interesting as a gay journalist and as a gay writer, looking at topics on the Middle East, looking at homophobia and that word Islamophobia and Islamofascism, which is another word that has, has been coined since then. Um, if you looked at interviews of the soldiers, the British and American soldiers who had performed this torture, and I will use that word torture uh, in, in, this, in this discussion, um, what they said was that the most humiliating thing that they could do to Muslim men was to force them to have sex with other men. And you remember some of the photos that you did see, the men were stripped naked, some of the men were forced to at least appear to be forming, performing fellatio on each other. But the American soldiers, the Western soldiers, the British soldiers had said, we did this because we knew that we could humiliate them because of the homophobia that existed in the Middle East and in Muslim countries. That that was how they thought they would humiliate them. What I think is very interesting when you look at this discussion and it really wasn't delved into much more deeply than that. Well, are you, you're talking about the homophobia of the Middle East and the Muslim countries and of the people being tortured, but in reality, the people forcing them to do this humiliating behavior are Westerners. They are the British and American soldiers because it is in the Western eyes that the most humiliating thing you can do is force two men to have sex with each other. Um, so while the soldiers, and, the, and it was discussed in media as Islamic and Middle Eastern homophobia that fueled this, I would argue back that it was actually Western homophobia that had fueled this form of humiliation, this form of torture. Um, so it's interesting also when we have these discussions, the homophobia is not necessarily from the Middle East, it's not necessarily from the Muslim countries. We have our own homophobia. Uh, which we have historically projected onto the Middle East and onto Muslim countries. So that's another thing that came about in terms of topics. It's another thing that I talk about in the book. Um, again, this continues to be in the news recently. There, it, it's my understanding also, I actually was this past week at a, a forum on torture in Iraq, that, that there are even photos that have not been released that show male-on-male -male rape, uh, but those photos have not been released. Um, so this continues to be the topic, and again, since Abu Ghraib, there's been other things that have been in the news. Uh, Ahmadinejad, for instance, when he spoke at Columbia and said that there were no gay people in, in Iran, uh, so that's been one of the topics. And then the executions of gay men in Iraq, uh, which is something I've actually gone into Baghdad to take a look at. So this is sort of the background of the book. That's the answer to the question, you know, what's gay got to do with it when people ask me that. Um, so what I wanted to do was take all of these issues that had already been in the news, that had been both in mainstream formats, had been in gay formats, um, and kind of look at them, combine them, kind of create an intelligent discussion about them, both through my experiences in the Middle East and those of other people who had traveled in Muslim countries. Um, one of the things that I think is very important, I mean, I'm best known as a travel writer, but I think that's sort of a very simplified discussion of the things that I do. But what's important to remember about travel writers and anybody who reads travel literature, we go to places and we convey what it's like to people who have never been to those places. Um, and that's, that's the role of a travel writer, whether they're writing about very simple things or more complex things. Um, and what I wanted to do was also with this book, you know, take a look at parts of the world that many people are actually afraid to visit and explain not just in terms of gay issues, but in terms of other issues, in terms of the culture, what it is actually like to visit these places. 
question that I ask, and again, it's always a very different um, answer depending on my audience. How many people here have been to the Middle East or to Muslim countries? 